Hey do-it-yourselfers, there's a cheap little valve on your engine that when it fails it can either cause hard to diagnose performance issues or if left unchecked it can cause a major mechanical engine failure. So today I'm going to tell you all about it, we're going to discuss the symptoms, how you can diagnose this issue and hopefully we can save you a lot of headache and money. Alright so as some of you may have guessed by now we're talking about the positive crankcase ventilation valve. Now as far as what the positive crankcase ventilation system does, well, it's all about the blow-by. Alright, now as far as what is blow-by? So right when your piston is about to reach top dead center, your spark plug will ignite the air-fuel mixture inside the combustion chamber. Now the ignition of the air-fuel mixture will press this piston down, but when that happens, some of the vapors from the combustion of the air-fuel mixture will manage to squeeze past your piston rings and get into your crankcase creating pressure or let's say positive pressure inside your engine's crankcase. Now if you don't have a positive crankcase ventilation system to get rid of that pressure, that extra pressure inside your engine can cause all the oil seals on, on your engine to fail like your engine oil pan seal or gasket, your rear main seal, your camshaft seals, your, your valve cover gaskets, you know that extra pressure can make them fail and then you're gonna have oil leaks all over the place but not just that, uh, that Vapor from the blow-by can also contaminate the oil and really gunk up the inside of your engine. And if you leave that unchecked for a long time, that can truly damage your engine, damage the internal parts of your engine. And if that happens, you are in need of a new engine. All right, now as far as how the PCV valve works. All right, so blow-by gets by past the piston rings, goes to the crankcase, and then from there, it can come back towards the top of your engine to the top of your cylinder head. Now as far as how that pressure finds its way to the top of the engine, it's pretty simple actually. Uh, as you may know, your camshaft, your rocker arms or push rods or whatever setup you have on your car has to be lubricated by pressurized engine oil. Now when that engine oil gets to the, to the top of the engine, it has to be able to find its way back to the bottom of the engine in the, inside the oil pan so that it can be pumped back through the engine by your oil pump. And there's always going to be passages either on the side of the piston or in this case through the valley here for that engine oil to drip back to the bottom of the engine oil pan. So through the same passages that engine oil gets from the top of the engine to the bottom of the engine, that pressure or vapors come from the bottom of the engine to the top of the engine. And that's where you can find your PCV valve, which I'm gonna show you on my 2001 Dodge Ram truck. All right, so on this truck, on the driver's side valve cover, if you look here, there is our PCV valve and as you can see this vacuum line is going from the PCV valve to our intake manifold. Now the PCV valve, if I can hopefully remove it without breaking it, yep I can, is a spring-loaded valve. And it's pretty interesting the way it works. Uh, so as you can see this side was on the valve cover. This side is where the vacuum line went to the intake manifold. All right, so the way this thing works is that, let's say when you have high vacuum inside your intake manifold, let's say at idle, the spring-loaded valve gets pulled back towards the, the back of the valve, towards the side that goes to the intake manifold. Now, when it's completely pulled back at high vacuum, it only allows for a little bit of air to pass from the engine side or the valve cover side to the intake manifold side and allow it for it to be recycled through the engine again. But at medium vacuum, let's say when you're uh, opening, starting to open the throttle, then this valve is only gets pulled back partially. Now when it gets pulled back partially, it actually allows for the maximum flow of vapors from the crankcase and the valve cover back to the intake manifold. And of course when the engine is off, the spring inside the valve closes the valve and does not allow for a flow of vapors from the engine side to the intake manifold side. Now on a positive crankcase ventilation system like this you also need a breather hose and you can find it on this car on the other valve cover. This hose right here. This allows for the flow of air from the filter box to the engine so that clean air can flow through the engine through this side and then with the vapors from the blow-by can be recycled through the PCV valve from this side to the intake manifold. Because of course if you don't have that breather hose, the PCV valve on this side can actually pull a vacuum on the inside of the engine. I'm gonna kill these birds. I'm gonna kill these birds. And that obviously is not good. 
Now, of course, not all cars have a PCV valve. They have a PCV system, but not a PCV valve like this Pontiac G3 here. The PCV system on these cars is really basic. It's actually just a hose connected to what they call the PCV orifice on the valve cover that goes from here to the throttle body back here. So yeah, on these cars, when there's pressure buildup inside the engine due to blow-by, that pressure goes from that orifice to the throttle body and then gets recycled through the engine. And since that hose from the valve cover goes to the throttle body, uh, before the throttle plate, there's no vacuum being pulled on the inside of the engine or the crankcase when the throttle is in the closed position or when the car is at idle. Yeah, pretty interesting setup to get rid of the PCV valve itself. I guess the engineers figured the people don't let their cars idle for an hour for that extra pressure to build up, especially since you don't have a whole lot of blow-by at idle. But of course, we're talking about cars that do come with a PCV valve. Now, as far as the symptoms for a failed PCV valve, well, this valve can fail in two different ways. It can either fail in the closed position or in the, it can get stuck in the open position. But there is the valve right in here. You can almost see it there. All right, so again, as we discussed, if it gets stuck in the closed position, you're obviously gonna build up too much pressure inside the crankcase, gonna cause you oil leaks, and again, gonna contaminate the oil. Also, a classic sign of a stuck closed PCV valve is if your engine oil dipstick keeps popping out. It's that pressure from the inside of the crankcase pushing it out. Also, when it contaminates the oil, you can not only see it, but you can also smell it. It's gonna smell funky and maybe even a bit like gas. And if it gets stuck in the open position, symptoms for that are a rough idle or maybe a misfire at idle because, again, at, when it's at idle, this valve is only supposed to allow for a minimal amount of flow from the crankcase pressure to the intake system. But if it gets stuck in the open position and allows for too much flow of air, it's gonna basically act like a vacuum leak. And obviously that's gonna cause you to have a rough idle or maybe even misfires. You can also have excessive oil consumption issues and maybe even some smoke out the tailpipe at idle. Because again, at idle, when the throttle plate is closed, you have high vacuum inside the intake manifold. And if this is open, let's say halfway, and is allowing for maximum amount of, uh, maximum flow of air from the crankcase to the intake manifold, it's gonna suck in a bit of oil. And if it's bad enough, it's gonna actually smoke out the tailpipe. Now, as far as how you can test one of these, well, one test is pretty basic. You simply grab it, wiggle it around, and make sure you can feel and hear the valve inside here moving freely. Another test you can do is to remove the PCV valve but leave it attached to the vacuum line that goes to the intake manifold. Next, you get in your car and start the engine. And then with your finger, you check and make sure you have vacuum. And as you can see, it's pulling on the glove I'm wearing. So yeah, we do have vacuum. Also, you can see the valve being pulled back all the way. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, I want to support my channel. All you have to do is to simply watch another one of my videos. You can either watch this one in this corner, watch the one right below it, or click on and watch any of my videos in the suggestion box. That will help as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.